Well, good morning. Let's stand as we sing He Lives and the ushers coming forward on the last verse. someone here this morning. Don't feel obligated to give. This is for our people to be able to share in uh, the giving of, of tithes and offerings for the spreading of the good news of Jesus Christ. And so we would just love nothing more than if you got one of the, the guest cards to have it filled out and put it in the offering as it goes by. All right, let's pray. Father, we, uh, we, we do pray to that end that the, the tithes and the offerings that we give to you now would go to, ex- to extend the your kingdom here upon the earth. And Father, uh, the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of his life, death, resurrection, and ascension, and come again, yes. would be uh, received around the world that they too might know Christ as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Every 
Peter 1, 18 through 20 says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long ago.
with you some words from this Christ who came back to life and he said a number of things while he was on the cross and as we've been talking about a pathway to the passion we need to see that there is a way in which we too can have victory over the grave that's why we're here today to be able to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. But you and I, too, can have victory over the grave. And I want you to turn with me really quick to the book of Luke. And in chapter 23... And would you stand with me as we reverence the reading of God's holy word. Beginning in verse 32. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. And when they came to the place called the skull, they were cru- they, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And the people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him, and they said, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. And the soldiers also came up and mocked him, and they offered him wine vinegar, and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. 
One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. You may be seated. Before we can gain victory here over death, we must first find salvation here. And I want to share with you that there is one of the thieves that was, that was crucified on his right and on, on his left. And I believe the scripture teaches us the one who was on his right found salvation that day and the one on his left did not. Three crosses on the south side of our building give an indication for us that there were three crucified that day. Not just that day. That was Rome's favorite way of killing people. But this day, there were three who were crucified. Jesus in the middle. One on his right. Gathered in in a conversation with him that led to eternal life and victory over the grave. I want to share with you really quick what this thief knew. Three things this thief knew. And the first one was... He was going to die. He knew he was going to die. Nobody survived crucifixion. Nobody. He knew he was going to die. Five years ago, last month, had the opportunity to be with my mom as she passed. And for three nights and four days, we were there, and I had the privilege of being with her on the last night. And I remember that sweet time of fellowship that we had. She was just remarkable. Come early morning, our conversation after we woke, our conversation started by her. And she said to me, Brad, I don't think I'm going to be here much longer. And I didn't know what to say at that moment. I mean, I could have said, oh, mom, you're going to make it through this. You've made it through all the rest of them. You're strong. You're going to make it. But I believe God in his wisdom gave me the words to be able to come out of my mouth at the next moment. And I said, mom, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? And she began to cry, and I began to cry. And she said, I'll be sad to leave you your dad and your sisters and your brother. But I am ready to go. This man knew he was going to die. And we do too, don't we? Second thing is this. He knew that Jesus had done no wrong. Other accounts say that at the beginning of the time in which they were crucified, not only did one on his left begin to insult him and call out to him in and, and a mockery thing to save yourself and save us, but this thief on the right also made comments, derogatory comments towards Jesus. But at some place in this conversation, he came to the realization that Jesus had done nothing wrong. I believe God opened his eyes to who this was that was at his left. And he became one who understood who Christ was. He understood that he was the Messiah. He was the Savior of the world. He was God's anointed, God's chosen. He was the king and he was coming into his kingdom. And he understands that Jesus is righteous and that he has done nothing wrong. And he understands that this guy next to me 
is a savior. Point number three. He knew Jesus could save him and make him a part of his kingdom. He says, remember me. In the King James, it says, remember me, Lord. Remember me, Lord, when you come into your kingdom. He understands that Jesus is going to die too, but he knows that Jesus is going to rise again. And he is going to come into his kingdom And he is going to bring with him saints in this kingdom that belong to him, and he wants to be one of them. He is saying, this isn't the end for you. And I believe. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. That's what the thief knew, but Jesus knew three things as well. And here's the first. He knew that he had come to die for the sins of his people, to save the people from their sins. He knew that that is why he was there. As he stood before Pilate, the Roman authority who would pronounce sentence of death upon his by crucifixion, the scripture records that Jesus said, it is for this time that I was born. The whole reason why I'm here is for this moment. That I will die for the sins of my people. You remember that Jesus tells Nicodemus in the garden, just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, that all those who put their trust and looked towards that serpent they would be saved from the bites of the serpents that were killing them. He said, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that everyone looks to him will be saved. Jesus knew his role. He knew that he was going to die. He knew he had come to die, and he was dying for the sins of the people. Three crosses are a perfect picture of why Jesus came to offer salvation to anyone who would believe. And on the cross, one on his right, accepted his offer and received salvation, and one rejected him, turned from him, and did not. Secondly is this. Jesus knew that soon he would be with the Father in paradise. He knew that soon his life was going to be over and that he would be with his father in paradise. Jesus turns to the one who asked him if he would be remembering him when he came into his kingdom. And Jesus talks to him and he says, I tell you the truth. In that phrase, you, I tell you the truth, it is a singular pronoun. It is possessive. It is, in other words, I'm telling you and you only. I'm telling you, listen to this, today you will be with me in paradise. There are two places in scripture that speak clearly about paradise. One is 2 Corinthians 12 and in verse 2 where it says, Paul says, I was called to the third heaven. And then two verses later, he likens that third heaven to paradise. Likewise, Jesus says, To him who overcomes, I will grant the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. If you go to Roman, or to Revelation chapter 21 and 22, you find the paradise. In the paradise is the tree of life in the presence of God. Jesus knew that victory was coming quicker than Sunday morning. When he said, it is finished, and he gave up his spirit, and he died, immediately he went into the presence of his father. Immediately went into the presence of his father. Oh yes, they took his body down off the cross, and yes, they had a tomb that had been there for a while. I realize that came across me this this week. You know, the whole time that Jesus is coming into Jerusalem and the whole time that they're doing this crucifixion, mockery and killing him, 
there is a tomb that's prepared for him. It just took Joseph of Arimathea to stand up and say, hey, I don't want him thrown in the, in the pile with all the other deads that have been killed. Can I have his body that we might put it in a grave? And so they did. They gave the body to Joseph of Arimathea. The scripture says that he bought some linens. He took it, and on the day before, before the Sabbath, he quickly put spices and linens on Jesus' body. And they rolled a stone in front of the tomb. Number three. He knew the thief who had called upon him in faith would be with him there also. Jesus, as if to say, turns to him and says, I'll meet you in just a little while in paradise. I'll meet you in just a little while in paradise. He was crucified there. And what Jesus says is quite outrageous. Maybe that's why he said, I'll tell you the truth. You may not believe this, but in just a little bit, you're going to be with me in paradise. Today, you will be with me. What greater words are those? With me in paradise. Let me go back five years. Last night that I'd spent with my mom, family came around. My mom got worse. She, uh, she went off to a state that many people do, in a state of unconsciousness unresponsive and as many people do they they gather in the room and they will share memories of of the loved one they will sometimes cry and sometimes laugh it's kind of odd when you're in the presence of death we were there in her presence and it was probably four five six seven I don't know hours where she lay And we watched her. We watched her breathe. And then something rather remarkable happened. She hadn't moved in a long time besides her breathing. And she sat up in the bed. Her eyes were real big. And she said two words. And she said them so clear and so remarkable It was just like, wow. Two words. And they were, Jesus. Jesus. I've thought about that a lot. I thought, you know, here was a whole room of family who would help her in any way we could. But in her moment of need, she didn't call for her family. She called for her God. And I thought about that in this way as well. I don't even know if she was talking to us or she was talking to him. She passed shortly after that without saying another word. She closed her eyes. She laid back down. She never made another another remark. Never made any more motions. That was her last thing that she would say. Jesus said in John chapter 11, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. See, the greatest news that your ear or my ear has ever heard is the news that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, just as he promised. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the chief proof of our faith. 
is the truth that lies at the foundation of the gospel. Other doctrines of the Christian faith are important, but this one is vital. Without belief in the resurrection, there is no salvation. Scripture in John or in Revelation, I'm sorry, in Romans chapter 10 says that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Essential to finding salvation is believing that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. A champion of love. In his dying moments, he was still ministering. He ministered to his mom as he told John, this is your son, and to John, this is your mom. He ministered to the people around him, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. He ministered to a thief on the cross. And he said, because you have believed today, you will be with me. In paradise. That's the call today for the church is to share the good news of Jesus Christ that he came to die for the sins of all who would receive him as Lord and Savior. Scripture says, For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Let's pray. Father, we're a whole lot like a thief in that we have sinned and fallen short of your perfect standard. We have fallen short of your glorious way. And you, Lord, have seen us in our perilous state in a state in which we could not do anything. We were hopeless and helpless. And so you came to us. You came to us in the form of a man just like us. He was a God-man who never sinned, was perfect in everything that he did. And yet, when he came, people rejected him. They scorned him. They wanted nothing to do with him except to crucify him, which was his plan all along, that he would come to die for the sins of all sinful men, that those who would trust their lives to him, they would too have everlasting life. Father, maybe there's some that are here in this room that are rejoicing this morning that death seems a little less scary today. That when death comes, it will not have the sting that Scripture talks about and we spoke about this morning. But death will be a point where we will be like Jesus, who on the cross said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And he bowed his head and he died. Father, that's where we want our spirit to be committed to you. And so I pray, Lord, that you would, you would uh, encourage the brothers and sisters here today. Father, today is a great day, a day of resurrection, a day of life, a day of hope. Father, today is a day of salvation for some that do not know you. And Father, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know that we have an opportunity today to receive you as Lord and Savior. In just a moment, we're going to sing this song. And if some are here today, would want to entrust their lives to you today, would come to you in faith, it would be my honor to pray with them to settle this matter, that they might call upon you today and that you would save them, prepare them, and make them ready for a life with you 
forever and ever. Lord, I pray that to this end. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.